Back in January, we polled cruisers asking what they wanted cruise lines to change in 2024. But that was just the start of the conversation. Since then, we've heard from hundreds of cruisers on YouTube, social media, and our blog about several things we missed. So we're back, and we have 10 more passenger complaints that the cruise lines need to address in 2024 up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. Don B here from Eat Sleep Cruise. Back in January, we asked our community, what's the one thing the cruise lines are doing currently that you would like them to change? And we got some great responses. Now, if you haven't already seen that video, check the description down below. But of course, since we put out that video, we've heard from more and more cruisers with some things that we missed. Among the most common missed items was cruise lines not enforcing their policies when it comes to adult-only areas. Besides a few adult-only cruise lines, like Virgin Voyages or Viking Cruises, many cruise lines try to appeal to travelers who do and do not have kids. However, even those family-friendly cruise lines often have adults-only areas reserved for those who are 18 plus or older. But as many cruisers pointed out, some cruise lines do not enforce these rules. Cruise lines like Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises have solariums supposedly reserved for older cruisers. However, we've personally seen those not old enough to operate a vehicle lounging around. Some cruise lines are better than others. The adults only area on Disney Wish was all the way after that ship. Thus, it was difficult for kids to access this area without being stopped by a crew. Likewise, many cruisers complained about children being in the whirlpools. Some claim that on many cruise ships, whirlpools are overrun with kids. Often these younger kids are playing with pool toys, being loud or misbehaving, and the parents are nowhere to be seen. So cruisers want the cruise lines to enforce their rules and ensure the adults only spaces remain just that. Many cruise lines send out surveys to guests at the end of the voyage. The cruise lines take this feedback seriously and use it to help improve the onboard experience. In fact, many cruise lines also use the survey responses to reward and promote crew. And this is where it can get a little dicey. On some cruise lines, the crew aggressively remind cruisers to complete the surveys and to give them a 10 point rating. For instance, on the last night of our previous cruise on Icon of the Seas, we heard from three different individuals in the main dining room about the survey and the need for us to rate them each a nine or a 10. Honestly, their promotion was not nearly as bad as some of the other cruises we've been on. Like other cruisers, we agree that this practice needs to stop. We admit that it's a huge turnoff for a crew to constantly remind travelers to give them a 10 point rating. Buried deep within the legalese of the cruise contract is the potential for the cruise line to change itinerary based on several factors. While many cruisers accept that this is an inevitable part of going on a cruise vacation, the cruise lines have been making some drastic changes lately without properly notifying passengers. And of course, we heard from several cruisers who want this behavior to stop. Just a few weeks ago, Norwegian Cruise Line completely changed an itinerary that was supposed to go to Antarctica and didn't notify cruisers until embarkation day. This past fall, MSC Cruises diverted a cruise that was supposed to go to the Bahamas to a Canada New England cruise. This change was made less than 24 hours before the departure from New York. These are just a few examples of several cruise lines making last minute drastic changes. For many, these alterations are inexcusable and almost a form of false advertising. To sell one experience and provide a completely different experience with little compensation is unacceptable for many cruisers. Of course, we agree that if cruise lines need to make changes, cruisers should receive advance notice and some form of reimbursement. The recent trend in past years is for cruise lines to build larger ships with increased gas capacity. While Heidi and I are fans of mega ships, not everyone likes these amusement parks at sea. While we enjoy all the amenities, many individuals want the cruise lines to stop building these behemoths. Instead, many hope the cruise lines would return to building newer, smaller vessels. Nowadays, if you want a small ship experience on a vessel that isn't 20 years old, you need to look towards more luxury and upper premium cruise lines, which of course will also cost you more money. As I mentioned, we just got off Royal Caribbean's new Icon of the Seas, which is now the world's largest cruise ship, measuring over 250,000 gross tons with a double occupancy of 5,600 passengers. However, one viewer did remind everyone that when the first passenger ships were being built, 
People complain when ships went from 300 passengers to over 600 passengers. At the time, those ships were referenced as being too big. So at some level, it's all about the point of comparison. As even small ocean cruise ships today, on lines like Viking Cruises or Oceana Cruises, hold around 1,000 passengers. In our previous poll, many cruisers indicated they were sick of those entitled cruisers. We all know those cruisers who cut lines, who rush the elevators, who act like they're better than the rest of us on board. While of course we agree and many other cruisers agreed that this behavior needs to stop, several other comments zoned in on another type of unruly behavior. Several posters rightfully aimed at the cruise lines for not enforcing their policies on over-serving alcohol. All cruisers have been on trips where fellow cruisers nearby have had one too many to drink. Now, we're not talking about that guy or gal laughing and joking around. We're talking about the obnoxious, loud, and disrespectful cruisers who can barely stand up. With cruise lines actively promoting drink packages, several viewers have suggested that this behavior is actually rising. While others tried to pinpoint some cruise lines on which these drunk people are more likely to be sailing. While everyone is on vacation and looking to have a good time, the cruise lines have clear policies on alcohol consumption, and many want more cruise lines to actually enforce these rules. All cruise lines have loyalty programs. The promise of cruising exclusively with one brand is appealing. Cruise more with that particular cruise line, and those travelers can earn additional perks. Then, cruisers in the loyalty program will receive special treatment and benefits. However, there were several cruise complaints about how cruise lines are running these loyalty programs. As some cruisers point out, the cruise lines have been changing the perks, making these loyalty programs less valuable. Others indicated that the loyalty programs are useless unless cruisers have been sailing with a line for years or go on many cruises a year only with that one line. What might even be more frustrating is there have been several issues where fellow passengers of a certain status with a cruise line have been denied certain perks when on board. For instance, last year, Carnival Cruise Line had so many passengers at the higher tiers of its VIFP program on two sailings that perks were removed. Royal Caribbean has made similar accommodations on some sailings. Of course, cruise lines apologize when these instances come up, but as some individuals have indicated, this issue will only grow as more cruisers achieve the higher tiers of status. However, some cruise lines are listening. Royal Caribbean is making some improvements to adjust for this influx. For instance, cruisers now receive drink vouchers on their CPASS card that are good at any bar. In the past few years, Norwegian Cruise Line updated its loyalty program, adding tiers and making it easier to get to platinum status, which provides some of the most desirable perks in that program. They also added additional tiers, so there wasn't a large gap between platinum and its highest tier ambassador. Unlike hotel rooms or other land-based vacations, cruise ship cabins are sold based on double occupancy, meaning at least two guests per stateroom. This means if you're traveling solo, a cruise vacation can be pretty costly. Well, twice as expensive to be exact. Thus, the single supplement is another aspect that cruisers would like to change about cruising. Some cruise lines are beginning to cater to solo cruisers with more solo cabins and more solo travel options and reduced single supplements. Norwegian Cruise Line is leading this trend by doubling the capacity of solo cabins across its fleet in 2024. Further, Norwegian Cruise Line will feature three new solo stateroom categories, including a solo inside, solo ocean view, and solo balconies. This means solo travelers no longer have to be confined to a windowless cabin. Many ships in the fleet also feature a studio lounge where single travelers can mingle. Holland America and Virgin Voyages are also known for being solo cruiser friendly. So let's hope this is a step in the right direction for the cruise industry. Some cruise lines have embraced technology more than others. Virgin Voyages and Princess Cruises have wearable technology that enables keyless entry and also makes ordering beverages a breeze with paperless signing. Then there are other cruise lines that still print paper receipts, even when the drinks are included in the package or when using a voucher. Yet these cruise lines make finding paper copies of the daily magazine difficult. Several cruise lines indicate they are making changes to be environmentally friendly. Then they have flyers for art auctions and jewelry sales in your stateroom at night. Several cruisers indicate they're sick of some cruise lines being like a nanny state regarding the onboard experiences. They're sick of swiping their room key card to get towels or having their stateroom attendant unplug electronics 
or shut off the air conditioning in their stateroom. The cruise lines claim these changes enhance the cruise experience, but many find them annoying and intrusive. Then there are the announcements. Whether it's updates from the captain or the cruise director detailing the upcoming belly flop contest, many cruisers wish the cruise lines would stop these excessive PA messages throughout the day. One common complaint we heard is cruisers are sick of larger ships. And even those who do go on larger ships have a bone to pick with the design. Larger ships often mean more venues and amenities. Thus, it can make navigating them more complex and cumbersome. But one common cruise complaint we hear is that there's a lack of signage and clear directions on these larger ships. We tend to agree with this as we've definitely roamed around some of these larger ships looking for a bathroom or even the entrance to specific venues. Virgin Voyages is notorious for having really small signs and directions. Not only are there no signs, their bathrooms are tucked away around corners and in odd locations. Icon of the Seas has a similar issue. While there are bright signs indicating bathrooms, there's also this faint red arrow. So finding the facilities near the theater or the main dining room takes some time. But at least on Icon of the Seas, the signs in the guest room decks and other areas of ship indicate if you're aft, midship, or forward. Other cruisers point out that on some mega ships, they don't even have these basic directions. And even when there are directions, some indicate that they're difficult to read. Now to be fair, cruise lines are designing ships to be more stylish and sophisticated. So having giant signs with arrows and block lettering doesn't really go with the new look. Plus, many cruise lines offer apps that include deck plans and even some have features that include step-by-step -step directions from one venue to another. Probably not that surprising, among the cruise complaints was for everyone else to relax. What several posters want to see stop is other cruisers complaining about cruising. Some were even as bold as to say they were sick of cruisers whining that cruising wasn't as good as it used to be in the past. And of course, this made us laugh, but it also gave us some great perspective. Overall, Heidi and I love cruising, and that's why we started Eat Sleep Cruise to help other people travel the world via cruise ships. We believe cruising is the best way to see new destinations, meet new people, and explore the globe. And as some individuals point out, a lot of these complaints tend to apply to all forms of travel. So while complaining might feel cathartic, it might not be the most productive thing to do. Plus, cruising is still a great value, and cruise lines are offering new, innovative ships and experiences every year. There are more cruise destinations than ever before, and travelers have so many options regarding itineraries and types of cruises. One constant in life is change. But for the most part, cruising has actually gotten better. Yes, there are some cutbacks and changes, but in the 15 plus years we've been cruising, the experience has certainly improved. And now that you know the 10 additional cruise complaints travelers have in 2024, it's time to find you the right cruise ship. Lucky for you, right here on YouTube, Heidi and I have our look at the 10 best new cruise ships of this year. In that video, we compare ships from cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Princess Cruises, Carnival Cruises, and more to help you find the right ship so your next cruise is smooth sailing.